Okay, so we're on to video two of the Phantom setup. Um, first thing I want to go through is you can buy some protectors for the rotor blades. They sort of fix on there uh, and they go like in a bow sort of shape, uh, letter D, say. Um, that'll protect the rotors as they go around because they'll bounce onto the plastic instead of your rotors. So you can see here. There's only one day's worth of flying. It's already took a few chips. Uh, where am I on this camera? Oh, here I am. Uh, it's mainly from landing I've got those issues. Um, bit of wear and tear. Um, the other thing I've done is with the GoPro, a lot of people may be using the other carrier. Um, for the camera, but I've took the the original GoPro one and installed that. The the reason behind that this is a waterproof case, and if I ever do crash it in water, it's I'm going to be able to at least recover the camera if the the quadcopter is completely knackered. Um, but also, um, if I have a bad crash, a bit of plastic case may actually save the camera. Um, next thing is, before you actually start flying this thing, it's worth getting on the internet, downloading the software, and loading the updates. Um, there's the USB cable inside there, right at the back. What you do is, you have to connect your battery up, take these blades off, um, because you can run some motor tests, and you really do not want the motors running in the house, um, especially if it decides to do something it shouldn't do and begins to take off so removing them while you're doing some um, tests and upgrading the software inside here is worth doing but while we've got the door open we can add the battery now you, you don't need this white cable that's just for the battery charger um, we just hook the battery on here Uh, that just plugs in there, and I'll just do a second video so I can actually plug this in because I can't do it. Okay, so I've connected the battery, taken them up through the top, push the battery in the bottom, and then that will slide in the top left hand corner, and then drop that in there if you can. You try not to jam any of the cables. One of the things I would look to is actually changing this lock to something a bit stronger. I still haven't decided what I'm going to do with that yet. Um, but I've seen already people have had this door open, the battery fall out, and it crashed the quadcopter, um, which included a guy that actually lost it uh, in a lake. Now, as you can see, this little orange light is on here. I've done something you shouldn't be doing, which is actually switching this on, uh, the quadcopter on, without the remote. The reason for that is um, if something did happen, you've got the remote on first, you've got control over the thing. But I also wanted to show the orange light. So, it's like that, so if we switch it on, this now, as you can see, the power's on, and it's flashing green. Those reds are it looking for a GPS signal, and that, that's telling me it's ready to go, but we're not. Reason being is I want to show you how to calibrate the compass. Okay, so when you first get it, the compass isn't going to be calibrated. So, how do you do it? Well, the first thing is these should be on the off position up here, and this one should be up in the GPS position. Now, that's basically you want to have them both in the top corner. As you can see, that's telling me it's ready to fly, but we're not actually going to fly it. We're actually going to go into the setting up the compass. To do that, what you do is you flick this up and down fast, like that, maybe six times, maybe more. And you get an orange light. That's telling you it's right now ready to be uh, calibrated. So, to do it, 
just turn it round 360 degrees and look green light now next thing is you need to take the red tips to the ground same again it's easier to and there you go that's it calibrated and the red the red flashing is actually looking for a GPS signal next thing we're going to do is take off um, I'm I got a concrete slab just to sit it on. Reason being is because you have this flat surface here, it's top heavy. It's prone to falling over. If you put on the flat grass, you're gonna find trying to take over, uh, sorry, take off. It will tip and not take off squarely. Uh, gonna put some skids on it later. I've got, his, got to either build them or buy them but that's one of the problems with it. Now, to fire it up, you just take this to the bottom left and this to the bottom right. And as you can see, it sprang into life. I'm not going to do this too much because I can't control it and, <laughs> and video at the same time. As you can see, pretty stable and I'll have to let, the, let go of the video now so I can fly.